name's Aaron Beyer. I'm the marketing product specialist for Gleaner Combine. I'd like to take a moment to talk about the 9300 series of Dynaflex headers. Some of the benefits, settings and adjustments, and corrections for common issues seen in the field. The 9300 series of Dynaflex headers is a draper header with a fully flexible cutter bar available in 25 to 40 foot widths. The fully flexible cutter bar allows the header to fully contour the ground and any terraces in the field. The frame is built strong enough to withstand the stresses of harvest, but light enough to reduce compaction and wear on the machine. The simple straight through drives and shafts efficiently transfer power throughout the header without adding weight or complexity. The first thing you notice about the 9300 series of Dynaflex headers is the shielding. The shields are designed not only to look good, but also to improve the function in the field. The divider shields are designed to cut through the crop without disturbing the next row and guide material away from the end of the reels onto the draper. The contoured shape slides through the crop and keeps material, straw or stems from hairpinning on the reel support cylinder. Crop that is cut and falls directly to the inside of the divider is guided onto the draper by the inside shape of the shield. This and the reduced hairpinning around the real lift cylinder are two improvements over the previous designs of Dynaflex headers. Another improvement is the integrated divider point. Easily remove or replace the divider point by depressing the latch underneath the divider and sliding the point from the receiver. Simply slide the point back into the receiver to install the divider. There are two dividers available, the standard divider and the long wing divider. Use the long wing divider in tangled or bushy crops to better keep the material out of the end of the reel and guide it towards the draper. Divider shields are easily removed by releasing the two latches and lifting the shield from the header. With the shield removed, Components underneath are easily accessed for service or maintenance. The top shields are designed to fully enclose and protect the hydraulic tubes and electrical harnesses underneath. A walking platform is integrated into the center of the header just in front of the feeder house. The rear shields cover the drives and the hydraulic cylinders that support the cutter bars. The shields are easily removed for service or adjustments. The cutter bar of the 9300 Dynaflex header is supported by hydraulic cylinders along the rear of the header. Each hydraulic cylinder is attached to a cutter bar support arm which pivots at the frame and allows for a total of 8 inches of travel when contouring the ground. Being able to cut this close to the ground decreases the losses attributed to the header and puts more grain in the grain tank. Pins located at the rear of the, each of the cutter bar support arms lock the cutter bar in the up position for service. Before the header can be operated in the field, each of the pins needs to be moved to the rear operating position. This will allow the cutter bar to flex and contour along the ground. The hydraulic circuit for the cutter bar support cylinders was improved for the 9300 Dynaflex headers. By changing the diameter of the tubes and the cylinders and moving to the two accumulators closer to the center of the hydraulic circuit, we are better able to flow oil between each of the cylinders and carry a more consistent pressure across the whole circuit as the header moves across the ground. This helps the header follow the contours of the ground better. The operator can adjust the pressure against the ground or rigidity of the cutter bar by adjusting the hydraulic pressure in the cutter bar support cylinders. This is done in the Titan terminal inside the operator cab. When operating with the header against the ground in flat terrain, adjust the cutter bar pressure to between 800 and 900 PSI. If more flex is required from the cutter bar, decrease the pressure to between 400 and 500 PSI. In softer soil conditions, it might be necessary to increase the cutter bar pressure to decrease the amount of material the cutter bar pushes. In harder soil conditions, decrease the cutter bar pressure to better contour the ground. When carrying the header above the ground, such as in small grains, increase the cutter bar pressure to between 24 and 2500 PSI. When going after down or lodged small grains, decrease the cutter bar pressure to 1900 PSI. The lower cutter bar pressure will allow the cutter bar to flex should the header come in contact with the ground. When the header is placed against the ground, the distance between the cutter bar and the ground is determined by the cutter bar skids. 
There are two different skid options available for the 9300 series of Dynaflex heads. The standard skid is recommended for those customers that operate in terrain with a higher population of rocks. The higher cut height allows the cutter bar to float over the top of the rock and push it into the dirt rather than pulling it onto the draper. Another customer that will likely use the standard skids is those that do second crop soybeans where there is a likelihood of material being pulled in between the draper belts. A low skid option is available for those customers that have to cut as low to the ground as possible. The low skids typically cut 12 millimeters or half an inch lower than the standard skids. These skids are recommended for those soybean varieties that grow pods close to the ground. This is another way we reduce header loss by cutting below those lowest pods. Speaking of skids, for those areas with soil that tends to wear out the plastic end skids, we offer a stainless steel option. The stainless steel increases the resistance to wear and extends the service life of the skid. Two different sickles are available for the header, the standard Agco guard and the SCH guard. Both come in small grain and row crop configurations. The operator can order a spare sickle to be stored on the header for easy access when needed. All widths of Dynaflex headers use a dual sickle drive configuration with Schumacher gearboxes and an integrated flywheel to maintain the quality of cut. As I said earlier, all 9300 Dynaflexes use a dual sickle drive. It's important when connecting the header to make sure that each drive is timed. This is made easy by a letter wheel installed on the header end of each of the drive lines. Make sure the same letter appears in the little window on each of the shields on each side of the header. If the sickle requires timing, position each of the sickles at the outermost position of their stroke. Then, adjust the position of the letter wheel to be able to show the le same letter on the left hand and the right hand side drives. The fore and aft angle of the header in relation to the ground, or pitch, is adjustable from the operator cab. This feature allows the cutter bar to better follow the ground without pushing dirt or material in front. In normal operating conditions, adjust the pitch of the header to have the longest section of the outside skids be against the ground. This allows the skids to move across the ground without wearing prematurely. When operating in ground conditions that's caused dirt or material to push in front of the cutter bar, pitch the header back to allow the skids to move over the top of that dirt or material. Be aware that operating in this position in sandy or abrasive soil can cause the back of the skid shoes to wear prematurely. Adjusting the pitch of the header to run on the toe of the outside skids is not recommended. This position can prematurely wear the front side of the skids or cause the cutter bar to gouge into the ground. The reel of the header is a single piece heavy duty construction with flip over bats that lift and move the crop towards the cutter bar and the draper. The fore and aft position is controlled by two electric actuators on the right and left hand side of the header. The operator can adjust the aggressiveness of the tines here at the right hand side of the header. The initial position is, is to have the tines vertical as they pass over the cutter bar. But if the operator wishes to increase the aggressiveness, adjust the tines to tip towards the cutter bar being careful not to cause material to carry over and wrap around the reel. It's important to set the minimum reel height to make sure that we can get the reel as close to the cutter bar without cutting off the end of the tines. This is done at the left hand and right hand reel support cylinders. Follow the instructions in the header settings guide to be able to set the reel an inch and a half above the cutter bar when the reel is at its lowest position and the cutter bar is at its highest position. In bushy crops such as canola that tend to tumble on the drapers, we offer a top auger that keeps that material moving in the right direction. The hydraulics for the top auger use the reel drive circuit, but unlike third-party aftermarket kits, the motor for the top auger is plumbed in parallel with the reel drive motor rather than in series. This allows for the independent speed control of the top auger. This means the operator can set the top auger speed slightly faster or slower than the reel speed. Adjust the top auger speed using a flow regulator located here on the right hand side of the header. Adjust the top auger speed to be slightly faster than the draper speed. 
The two side draper belts bring material to the center of the header. The tracking is maintained by an integral rib at the rear of the draper belt. Belt tension is adjusted and maintained using a tensioner located under the last shield at each end of the header. Use the included tool to adjust the tension until the indicator is at the center of the notch on the tensioner wheel. There are two options available for side draper drives. The standard fixed speed moves the side drapers at 9.3 feet per second. An optional variable speed allows the operator to adjust the side draper speed to match crop conditions and evenly feed the machine. The operator can adjust the speeds between 6.3 and 10 feet per second. The center draper moves material from the two side drapers to the center auger. Tension is maintained by two adjusters located at the front corners of the center draper. Use the included tool to adjust the tension until the center draper belt doesn't slip when loaded with the crop. Make sure the tension is even on both sides. The center auger evenly distributes the material from the center draper across the opening of the feeder house. The flighting of the standard center auger aggressively grabs the crop and moves it to the feeder house. If material starts to wrap around that center auger, install the included fillers to be able to keep that from happening. When harvesting crops with large volumes of material that tend to wrap around the center auger, we offer a center finger drum which uses fingers to grab the material, the material is then compressed under the drum, and then the fingers release the material into the feeder house. This ensures that an even crop mat entering the machine. Field installed stabilizer wheels are available for 35 and 40 foot headers. The stabilizer wheels help improve the operation of the larger headers in ground with uneven terrain and help maintain a cut height. Torsional springs located in the pivot of the brackets help support the weight of the header. The stabilizer wheel can be placed in one of four positions two operational positions and two storage positions. The low cut height position is used when harvesting soybeans and placing the cutter bar against the ground. The high cut height position is used when harvesting cereal grains and carrying the cutter bar above the ground. The first storage position is used when operating the header in the field and not using the gauge wheels. And the second storage position is used when transporting the header on a cart or storage. Remove the wheels prior to placing it in this position. Two different sets of sensors are used to sense the position of the header in relation to the ground, drag rods or cutter bar sensors. Use drag rods when carrying the header above the ground. The AGCO option for drag rods uses two heavy steel bars located at each end of the header. The weight of the heavy steel bars maintains contact with the ground. The head side option for drag rods uses four sensors, two sensors at each end of the header and two sensors closer to the center. The four sensors gives better visibility of the position of the head when operating in ground with terraces. The spring-loaded sensors maintain contact with the ground and are located closer to the cutter bar. When the header is placed against the ground, cutter bar sensors are used to sense the position of the header in relation to the ground. A cutter bar sensor is placed at the end of each of the cutter bar support arms. As the position of the cutter bar support arm changes, the voltage from the sensor changes and relays that information to the combine. A connection located at the rear of the header to the left hand side of the feeder house is used to determine which sensors, cutter bar or drag rods are used to sense the ground. Connect the corresponding connector to the averaging module to determine the sensors. When using cutter bar sensors, set the cut height to the middle of the cutter bar sensor voltage range. To see the cutter bar sensor voltages, navigate the terminal to either the service screen or the calibration screen, depending on the series of combine. You'll see a left and right hand voltage. To calculate the sensor voltage range, remove all the pressure from the cutter bar. Next, raise the header to the maximum position. Note the left and right hand cutter bar sensor voltage. Now drop the header to the lowest position. Again, note the left and right hand voltage. Calculate the difference between the maximum and minimum sensor voltages and set the cut height to the middle of this range. Doing this will put the cutter bar in the center of the range of movement and give the cutter bar sensors the highest amount of resolution to accommodate for changes in the ground terrain. 
Make sure to calibrate the header height control sensors and the real speed sensor when the header is first installed on the combine or at the beginning of every season. The process to do this will differ depending on the series of combines, so consult your operator manual. The 9300 series of Dynaflex headers continues the tradition of harvest solutions from Gleaner. Thanks for taking the time to learn a little bit more about the header and understanding why it's got to be Gleaner.